Our dear viewers and listeners. We greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice. Welcome to today's Bible study. As you invite somebody to join you in this wonderful session that we're having today, let's humble ourselves to dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. We receive your word with meekness, yes, Lord. with humility. Mm. Let it work a work only you can do in our lives. Yes, Lord. That it might produce outward fruit yes, Lord. to the praise and glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 So today's reading, or today's text will be taken from the book of Romans chapter 2. We shall be reading from verse 25 to verse 29. The Bible says, Bible For circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the law. But if you are a breaker of the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. Therefore, if an uncircumcised man keeps the righteous requirements of the law, will not his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? And will not the physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills the law, judge you who? Even with your written code and circumcision are a transgressor of the law. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly. Nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart. In the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not from men but from God. Today's subject is the subject of circumcision. And before we delve deeper into it, I want us to first lay the foundation. So we will be taking a walk through through the entire Bible to try and unveil two things. One, the mandate. The second is the necessity of true circumcision. So, for us to understand where we are coming from, Paul is now addressing the Jews. So, he, in verse 17 of chapter 2, he says, indeed, you are a Jew. Who have the law? Why do you teach others the law and do not follow it yourself? Now, here he goes at the law. Something that the Jews prided themselves in. And moving from the law, he now goes for the practice of circumcision, which was being practiced by all 
male Jews. And it is here that he draws the distinction between what is true circumcision and what is false circumcision. Now, for you to understand about circumcision, we begin the journey in Genesis. When God comes to Abraham, in chapter 17 of the book of Genesis, the Lord says from verse 10 to verse 14, He says, this is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. And you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin. And it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male child in your generations who is born in your house or bought with money from any foreigner who is not your descendant. He will is born in your house and who is bought with the money must be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. So here we see God establishing a covenant with Abraham. And this was the sign of the Abrahamic covenant. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 12 and verse 3, this command was enforced by the Mosaic law. Where he says, on the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. So this practice was intended to picture what must happen to the heart. The analogy I would draw to this is the picture of baptism giving us the reality of our salvation. So the foreskin was cut with a sharp knife. And, and the picture is that this person was now set apart to God. So it was a picture of somebody's heart being cut by the word of God. And as a result, this heart is now set apart. So it is a picture of two things. One, the new birth. And then it also pictures the conversion. So you are here we have a physical representation of what takes place in the heart of the believer. Now to understand this, we need to go to the book of Deuteronomy. So Deuteronomy is the book that we call the second giving of the law. 
Moses here was in the wilderness giving the departing instructions to a people that were about to inherit the land of promise. Physically, they have been circumcised. But by the heart, spiritually, they were not circumcised. So in Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 16, he addresses them and says, Therefore, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be stiff-necked no longer. So in this verse, what is Moses trying to address? He brings to the four two things. One, an uncircumcised heart. And he points to this to being stiff-necked. Now, being stiff-necked is an interesting one. For you to understand it, you have to picture, to draw a picture of a master and an ox. So here is the master trying to put a yoke on this ox. So that it can be able to work for the master. So what the ox will do, it will square its shoulders and stiffen its neck. And there was no way the master would then place the yoke on its neck. So to be stiff-necked would mean, one, it would not submit to the, to the yoke of the master. It refused to humble itself before the master. So now Moses paints this picture to the children of Israel. And he says they are stiff-necked. Basically, they are not submitting to the lordship of God over their lives. Their lives are not surrendered to God. And Understanding this, it brings to perspectives what, what you, the individual, must accomplish. And secondly, what you let God accomplish with regard to the whole picture of circumcision. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 30, Verse 6, he draws the God part of the whole circumcision picture. Where he says, and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart. And with all your soul, that you may live. Basically, this is conditional. So if God has not circumcised your heart, then you are spiritually dead. So, an unconverted heart does not have spiritual life. So, it is necessary for heart circumcision to happen. 
So without being circumcised to heart, you are separated from God. And without spiritual life. So heart circumcision here represents being set apart to God by the Spirit through a new birth. And it is the same picture that God paints in the prophecy to Jeremiah. In chapter 4, verse 4, he speaks now about the part that the humans play. So we've seen the part that God plays. The Deuteronomy 30. Now we see the part that humans play. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 4. This is what the Bible says. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. And take away the four skins of your heart. Now remember he's speaking to a, a physically circumcised people. Now he addresses what is missing. So they're not going back to do a physical circumcision of their heart. No, he's trying to tell them that they have a role to play. And this role will remove the sinful resistance to God and the refusal to submit to his authority. And he gives the repercussion of not doing that. He says, or else, my wrath will go forth like fire and burn which no one can quench because of the evil of your deeds. So, so the foreskin on the heart is what caused someone to live a sinful and rebellious life. So that is why the word of God, which in Hebrews 4.12 is sharper than any double-edged sword, must cut and remove that layer of rebellion and bring conviction of the heart. And it comes by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it brings you to a place where conviction sets in. Conversion takes place. And then the Spirit begins the work of regeneration in the life of this converted believer. Other than doing that, you will boast about everything. You boast about the ritual and miss out on the Redeemer. You, you boast about the ceremony and then miss out on the Savior. And then in Jeremiah, God goes to tell us and points the Jews to what they should be boasting about. In Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23, he says, Let not a wise man boast in his wisdom. And let not the mighty boast in his might. No And says, let not the rich man boast in his riches. No He says, okay, so if you're not boasting in your riches, if you're not boasting in your wisdom, if you're not boasting in your might, what is there to boast about? 
He says, let him who boast. Boast of this. That he understands. And he knows me. And he goes on to tell us. Verse 25 to 26. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. That I will punish all who are circumcised. With the uncircumcised. And he lists the uncircumcised. Egypt. <laughs> Judah. Judah. Edom. Edom. The people of Ammon. Moab, Moab, and all who are in the farthest corners, who dwell in the wilderness. For all these nations are uncircumcised. And all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. Basically, what is he trying to say? He's saying those who are physically circumcised and those who are not circumcised, all of them are going to meet the same fate. Why? Because they have not been circumcised in the heart. And so, all nations are uncircumcised. And all the house of Israel is uncircumcised in the heart. So he, what is he meaning? Here he says, there are those that are physically circumcised. But spiritually they are unregenerate. So although these belong now to what is called the commonwealth of Israel. They are not part of God's spiritual kingdom. Why? Because they have participated in a ritual. But in reality, their heart is not set apart for God. And the Lord proceeds in Ezekiel. Chapter 44, verse 7. He goes on to say, to the house of Israel. When you brought in foreigners uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh to be in my sanctuary to define it. My house. And when you offered my food the fat and the blood then they brought my covenant because of all your abominations. And I, I, here I want you to see the distinction that God gives of the Gentile. Though he lists those who have been circumcised physically but not spiritually. And he goes on to say, that says the Lord God. No foreigner uncircumcised in heart. That's one group. Or uncircumcised in the flesh. Shall enter my sanctuary. Including any foreigner who is among the children of Israel. So now he is drawing the essence of what he gave as the law or the covenant to Abraham. So it was not just a matter of the physical act. The focus was the heart. So this is what Paul, when we go to the New Testament, for many of you are saying now, you have limited us to the Old Testament. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7. 
that wonderful sermon given by the martyr Stephen before the Sanhedrin and before all the people before his execution after taking them through the history and bringing forward their spiritual apostasy he comes to verse 51 and says, You stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. So do you. What is he pointing out? Here. He's saying, yes, you have been circumcised in the flesh. But what needs to happen is that your heart and ears need to be circumcised. Otherwise, you will keep resisting the Holy Spirit. Like your fathers did and face the wrath of God. And it says, so do you. Now, the subject doesn't end there. He's pointing them back to Deuteronomy. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and he now crowns it up to them and says, you are not different from them. Now, Paul Paulo. in his letters to the various churches addresses the same issue. And let's look at Galatians. Here Paul is coming to a church Paulo that he had visited during his first missionary journey. And after he had left, other false teachers came in compelling those that had converted to Jesus Christ to be circumcised in the flesh. Now, when Paul comes to write to the church concerning them, he says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 15, he says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but a new creation. In other words, he's saying there is no saving value whatsoever in physical circumcision. But he says, but a new creation. So what is he trying to say? He says the only thing that matters to God is that the person has been born again and has now become a new creation. Later he writes to the church in Corinth and he says if any man be in Christ he is a new creation a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So to become a new creature, here the new birth has happened. And it is the same school of thought which he gives to the church in Ephesus where he writes in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11 when he brings to our attention who we were before. He says, therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh now I want you to note the words he's using. He says once. 
Gentiles in the flesh. Basically, he's trying to say, now you are no longer Gentiles in the flesh. And he says, who were called the uncircumcision? By what is called the circumcision made with the flesh by hands. So what is he trying to say? <laughs> He's bringing two groups. There are those who have been physically circumcised. And so this looked down on those who had not been physically circumcised. Now, Paul brings the perspective here. And he wants them to understand that the circumcision that puts someone at the place of privilege is not one made by physical hands, but one that is made to the heart by the Spirit of God. And he uses a more hostile language when he writes the church in Philippine. Now, when he writes the church in Philippi. This is what he says in chapter 3. He warns them and says, beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation. Three things they need to be aware of. One, the dogs. To the workers of evil. Three, the mutilation. And he goes on to say, for we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So the qualification of who is circumcised are three. One, worshiping God in spirit. Number two, rejoicing in Christ Jesus. And number three, having no confidence in the flesh. So let's look at the dogs issue. He's calling false these false teachers dogs why his basically dogs were unclean animals and during that time they would roam the streets. So they would go to where heaps of rubbish were and eat the leftovers there. So in roaming through the streets, they would carry diseases from one point to another. So now Paul, Paul, Paints these Judaizers. Kati mukuogera bano aba Yudaya. He paints the same picture that they are actually dogs. Nayaba sigre chifana and chibali inga zidiye mbua. In other words, they are spreading and a false religion. Bali mukuta ambuze e dini e encham. Sorry, they are spreading a false teaching. Bali mukuta ambuza enji gidi zanga encham. Which is likened to a disease that comes out of eating from what is left over. What, what is stinking? What has been thrown away? And so he says these are heretical. And you should not be following them. In verse 3, 
of chapter 3 he says we are the true circumcision so he gives what is for circumcision and he now gives the true circumcision and the true circumcision is not made in the flesh he says I myself may it have had confidence even in the flesh and says, if anyone has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, he says, Paul, I, Paulo, far more. So there is so much you could boast about. But he comes to paint the picture that all these physical rituals mean nothing with regard to us gaining acceptance with God. So what he came to understand is that it is the circumcision of the flesh heart where God puts his spirit in you and causes you to obey his word that is important in life. In the, his letter to the church in Colossae he again talks about the false teachers who come with humanistic philosophies Jewish legalism and bodily asceticism and he says that is like it's like a dirty river all it is like a dirty river whose streams, you have streams coming from it. So the water is still from the same source. And they need to be aware of that. And he goes on to say, in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 11, he says, and in him, Concerning Jesus Christ, yeah, yes, so Christ, you are also circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands. So what is he trying to say here? That in Christ Jesus, when we have faith in him, we receive a circumcision of the heart not with the physical hands. So here when he talks about the flesh, he is making a distinction between the circumcision of the heart by the spirit and the circumcision made by the physical hands. And here, when we understand that, we we'll draw it back to the day of Pentecost. When Peter preached this wonderful message. And the Bible says in verse 37 of chapter 2 that when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart. Now that word pierced is the Greek word katonuso. So it will be like getting a butcher's knife and cut through. So here, we need to be diligent about our hearts. Because when our hearts are circumcised, this is when what, what was spoken about in Proverbs chapter 4. 
where he says, watch your heart with all diligence. From, from it flows the springs of life. So back to today's text. Paul paints the picture for us. On who? is the circumcised. Who is the uncircumcised? And what is true circumcision? So in painting the picture of the circumcised, he begins in verse 25 and says, for indeed circumcision is of value or is profitable if you practice the law. So what he's trying to say here, he says if circumcision is to be of any value, it has to be a circumcision that reflects what has happened on the inside. So when a person has been circumcised to the heart by the Spirit of God, then they are able to practice the law. Why? Because the law of God has been imprinted upon their heart. They may not keep the law to perfection, but they will habitually keep the law. Why? Because they have a new heart. So, and it goes on to say, but if you are a breaker of the law, then your, and your circumcision has become uncircumcision. Basically, what he's trying to say is that, yes, you may, be, you may have undergone the ritual, but if your heart is not circumcised, then you will not be able to keep the law. So your physical circumcision will be of no profit to you. And then in verse 26 to 27, he brings the aspect of the uncircumcised physically. And he says, if the uncircumcised man keeps the requirements of the law, will not his uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? So how will the uncircumcised man physically be able to become the circumcised? How will he meet the requirements of the law? He will meet the requirements of the law if his heart has been circumcised. So, him not being physically circumcised, but circumcised to the heart, will meet the requirements of the law. And here he paints the picture. And he says, if he keeps the law, will he not judge you who having the letter of the law? And have the circumcision. And yet you are a transgressor or a breaker of the law. So you see, you cannot meet the requirements of the law within your physical strength. Nobody comes even close. So in Christ Jesus, we receive the circumcision of the heart. We receive a new heart. The foreskin that we saw all the way from Deuteronomy is removed. Our hearts become nimble. 
e mitima jafi neji nejifuka nga miangu maliable in the hand of god nga ja miangu mikono ja katonda attentive to what the spirit is saying o god la no kuli the dobozi lyo muwa and therefore Paul paints the picture of what true circumcision is. Kati Paul akulage chifana echitibwo komole bwo kutufu. In verse 28. Abili munana. He says for he is not a Jew who is one outward. Kubanga siye mu Yuda yo wo kunguru nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. So he's trying to say something here. One, he says, yes, you may have belonged to this class of Jews. But in the eyes of God, you are disqualified. Because you are not a Jew because you have performed an outward ritual. Okutukirizo komole bakungulu sije ekikufulo mu Yudaya. Yeah, he says even the ritual itself. Tine chikolwa chenyini kububiri. Is not the circumcision God is looking out. Sikwe komole bakatonda kwano nya. So being made right with God. We okufuko mutukirize katonda. Is found in an outward ceremony that you perform. Tetisoke bakuita mu chikolo bo mukolo bumubiri boyokola what happens to the heart nechi chiba munda mutima bo and that is what he wants us to pay note of echo cha gara tuweye eri mitima ja fenesida so the circumcision that he talks about okomole bakwa oyogera ko in verse 29 kusange mwa bi mwenda but he is a jew na yo mu yudaya yo yo one inwardly oyonga yo wo munda and the circumcision is that which is of the heart no komole ba kwe kwo mutima by the spirit mumuoyo not by the letter simu nukuta so what is he trying he gives you the definition of who an authentic jew is na kunyonyola omuyuda yo mutufu omumanyira ku so the letter is simply giving a picture of what the requirements of the law are bayogera kunukuta kulaga ebili mateka and then he contrasts contrasts the act na chigiragerera ne chikolwa so one is done with hands echeri chikolebwa na mikono which is unacceptable echo nga chichigani do and then what is done by the spirit to the heart kati nendi omoyo cha akola mu mutima that is what is accepted echo che chikirizibwa and he says and his praise nagama no kutendereza bakoyo is not from men sikwe kuva mu bantu but from god na ye katonda Now this is an interesting one as well. Chino ate chili mu binji nyo. So here he is trying to say something. I na cha tegeza. So he's trying to say the ordinary Jew. Ndi omuyuda yone ya zaliwa. By having the physical circumcision. Ye kubanga yakomolewa ku nguru. He's going to be praised. But ya mutendereza. But the praise is from men. Na ye abantu be bajjo ku mutendereza. Because he has had the physical circumcision. Kubanga ya akomoledwa ku nguru. And he says that does not matter. Necho stechigasa. What matters is the praise from God. Ndi eche nsonga ye okutendereza bo kuveri katonda. Now what is interesting is this. Atechi singa yo bulunji che chino. The word Jew Ekigambo kino kya koseryo mu Judaya in Greek Murionan is the Greek word laudaios che che choriyonan laudaios laudaios means praise kitegeza kutendelezebwa from Judah okuveri okuveri Judah from the tribe of Judah oba ekikacha Judah so he's trying to say something here aina cha isawu is saying true praise okutendelezebwa okulunji okutufu is true praise that comes from God kwe kutendelezebwa okuveri katonda not through a physical inheritance sikuita mu busika obwo mu bi but a one that we draw from a spiritual inheritance na yo kukwetufu no kuva mu kusika okusikira mu muoyo so which brings me to some very important questions kati nine chibu ebibuze ebikulu byenyu that i want you to clearly think about gendo bifumitirize ko and ponder on biroze ko and come to a decision obeko okusala okuokola have you received the circumcision of the spirit wafuno komole bako moyo yes you may have had the circumcision of the hands of the flesh but the 
circumcision of the spirit. Because this we have seen from scripture. That it is the true circumcision. It is what God is looking out for. So it is this that God desires of you and I. It is not a physical one. It is a spiritual one. So what will happen? Your heart will be converted. And God by his spirit will regenerate your heart. And here will be the new individual whose heart no mutima is molded by God's word. Whose heart is in the hands of his spirit. And whose heart is obedient to the voice of the spirit of God. Does that define you? If not, this is your moment to surrender your heart to Jesus Christ. To give your whole self to him. Don't be stiff-necked. He promises to change the heart of stone into a heart of flesh. It begins by saying yes to Jesus. But all that comes with you acknowledging that you are a sinner and you need a savior. You need a Lord in your life. And the Lord I'm talking about is the Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't you say this prayer from the bottom of your heart? Allow the Spirit of God to dig deep. Remove what is filthy in inside. I like the water carries away all unfaithness the spirit of God will move on unrighteous from you and do his regenerate work in you say dear Lord Jesus, yes. you are the savior of the world. You are the savior of mankind. I am a sinner. And I need you in my life to save me. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin and was raised from the grave for my justification. Lord Jesus, save me now. Cleanse me. Purify my heart. Circumcise it. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me, Lord, to live this life for you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. You say that prayer. You've been saved. It is by faith. It's not the number of words that you say. It is the heart. And you allow the Spirit of God to do what only He can do. There is a number on the screen. Please call. Tell us what God has done in your life. I believe God follows his word before me. And as his word goes out right now, the spirit of God moves to bring conviction to remove those things that are not pleasant in God's sight that the new you can live to the praise of God who loved you and gave his only begotten son that you may live. Please tell us what God is doing and we will celebrate God. From Dominion Church. It's been a blessing.
Chima de chamu kisa nyo. It's been an honor to have you today. Chamu endo nyo kubana wiki. We say God richly bless you. Mukama kuwa mukisa. Till we meet again. Paka wetuna damu. Say shalom.